He's like, ha ha, Brett, ha 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 ha. Like, everyone started throwing gifts. And the first thing my was thinking was, I'm going to chase Eddie down with this. How do you design and create a two-set show? And then he starts doing these TikTok dances or whatever. Mendelssohn! <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Two Set Talks. Woo! A very exciting news before we start. So today's topic is about the world tour. You know, we've wrapped it up. It's been 2023 to 2024. And it went for just over a whole year. Mm -hmm. And it was very exciting. And as a little celebration, we decided to launch an apparel mm -hmm. collection that is inspired from the pieces that we played in the world tour. So it is the Academy collection. You can see the sleeves all have the Academy logo. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so Brett's wearing the Passacaglia. I love this. This is um, a tessellated design to kind of reflect the Baroque counterpoint. Everything's very patterned, structural. And then on the other hand, we have the Claire de Lune, which we played. For those that know, uh, you need the talent yes. to play Debussy. <laughs> and um, yeah, look at that. I love it. It's actually really cool. Got the manuscript at the bottom. And it is inspired. Oh, sorry. I'm not talking to the mic. It is inspired by, obviously, the impressionistic art style. So definitely check it out. And also, as always, check out Two Set Academy mm -hmm. uh, for some very exciting educational projects that have coming up. Sweet! Thank you guys so much for support. I know um, we haven't had merch and apparel for a while now, but thank you for waiting. Yes. Yeah, this, actually, we had many designers. We worked on it with many designers on this whole collection. Super proud of it. Yeah. If you guys want a memory piece of the World Tour, go check it out. So, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about World Tour. I wrote down some thoughts, some questions I want to talk about, but I don't know. I guess to start off… <laughs> Did you have a favorite country? Because actually, we did 30, <laughs> how many did we do? 38 or 39 concerts? 38, 38 or 30, I can't remember. Almost 40, you're so close. Yeah, I know. I should have added two more in. Yeah. Um, I think we did I mean, 38. we have a virtual tour concert, right? Yes, okay. Then we have 40 now. Woo! Is it two? We're doing three. <laughs> three. 41. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Okay, whatever. But 38 live concerts. Uh, do you remember the, can you spit them out? This, all the cities off the top of your head. Oh, okay. Uh, just testing my kind of memory and timer. First one, Hong Kong, Helsinki. Are you counting for me? Because I'm going to just go. Okay, Hong Kong. Hong Kong, Helsinki, London. Wait. Yeah, you're right. Hong, Hong Kong, Helsinki, <laughs> London, Berlin. No, you missed one already. Hong Kong, Helsinki, London. There's another Scandinavian one. Yeah, but that's the second trip. I'm going. I'm linearly. Oh, oh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. thinking. Oh. Okay, so actually, Brett's got a really good time memory. It's like a super skill he has. Like, if I ask him, "What do we do in January 2022?" He probably could tell me. I can't actually. Well, yeah, I can. But okay, anyway. Whoa, I whoa, was whoa. In, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, whoa, whoa, anyway. whoa, 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 whoa! In January 2022. Well, we're preparing for the music video. I couldn't tell you if you're right or yeah. wrong because I forgot. No, the, the, anyway. <laughs> yeah, whatever. okay. Um, yeah. Damn. So, okay, sorry. Again. Here we go. Hong, Hong Kong. Kong, Helsinki, London, Berlin, Montreal. Um, then we went to… What's the city there? Montreal, the Toronto. We did mm. two there and then two in Vancouver. Oh, oh wait. Sorry. Hong Kong, Helsinki. London. London. Berlin. Berlin. Montreal. Montreal. Two in Toronto and two in Vancouver. Yes, okay. So, so we had a mini nine. break. Then we went out again. Yes. <clears throat> then this time was to the States. Oh, okay. Here you go. We did oh, 10 or 9 in the States? 10. 10 I think nine. we did 10. Uh, uh, let's see if it's 10. So then it became… The first one in the States was New York. <laughs> New York. So oh, okay. Like but I remember the energy was cool. I remember there's this… Scene where I laid down. Yeah, yeah. And, just, and I almost fell asleep and passed out because yeah, it was jet lag. So jet lag. <laughs> It was New York, New York, Philadelphia, Washington. Then we kind of skipped to like Washington, Houston. Wait a second, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, Washington, Houston, Houston. Atlanta, Atlanta, Boston, Boston. Then we went to Chicago. 
Chicago. Yes, yes. Then we went to uh, San Francisco, LA. Uh, LA, San Francisco, San LA. Seattle. Correct. So, so nine. 19. Yeah. yeah. Those nine shows, right? Or was that 10? I think it was 10, right? That was 10, okay. Wait, say it again. New York, Philadelphia, Washington, Washington Houston, Atlanta, Atlanta, Chicago, Boston, Boston, Chicago. Chicago. Yes, it's three. Uh, 10. Yeah, 10. Uh, yeah. Seattle, so 19. LA. So it's 19. And then we, after that, we did, okay, so we went to Perth, Melbourne. Australia, of course. Yeah, yeah. Australia, Perth, Melbourne, uh, Sydney, Sydney, Opera House, I remember. Sydney Opera House. Sick. That was so cool. Melbourne and Sydney, that was cool. Perth, actually, Perth console was sick. And then everyone's like stomping. And then we did Brisbane. Yeah. Then we did Auckland. Yeah. And then we did two in Singapore. Yes. Funny story about Brisbane show. I'll share later. But yeah, okay. let's keep going. How many is that now? 26. 26. Okay, then that was that done. Once was that once that was done, we did Europe again. Yeah. Because we realized the first trip was too short for yeah. Europe to We went to Copenhagen first. That's right. right? I forgot. And yeah. then we did Amsterdam. Mm. Um, we also… But we didn't… No, sorry. We went to Copenhagen, then we went to Oslo. Yes. That yeah. was the one I was thinking. Oslo. And then we went to… Because Oslo had a really nice hotel. That's what I remembered. Oh, you're so nice. Right? Oh my God. And then we went to Amsterdam and also Munich. Yes. Munich. I barely remember Munich. We surprised you with happy birthday. With the audience. I remember that. But I'm just thinking about the city. Sorry. When you talk so much, <laughs> it's like my brain can't remember what… It's a blur. Uh, what Munich, Munich hang out like? with Kana. Okay, I remember. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went to that kind of touristy area. Yeah, yeah. And, the... then, uh, and then… I mean, this happens quite often, but I remember… This oh, yeah. There event. were a lot of musicians in Munich, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of musicians. Yeah. And also, and this is the first time… Not the first time. It happened a few times, but… It's more recent, so I remember where a fan actually gave us bubble tea. A fan that worked in yes, the hotel. In the hotel. Yes, yeah, so it was pretty and cool. And Munich had, for Euro- my, my perspective, for European standards, pretty good Asian food. Actually, you're right. Yeah. True. But that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> oh, but yeah, so true. <laughs> okay, then after that, we went to. Okay, then that was that. That was it. Munich, yeah. Then we did more of Asia because we did Singapore twice already, yes. right? So then mm-hmm. we went to. We did Hong two Kong. more in Hong Kong. 31, 32, yep. Yeah. Because that was so many thing. fans Hong Kongs. Thank you. Thank you. Lei Ho. I'm not going to say that line. <laughs> uh, and then we did one in Guangzhou, one in Shanghai, Shanghai. one in Beijing, Beijing, and then one in Malaysia. Uh, Kuala, Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. That's only 36. Really? I thought it was the 38. Oh, I forgot. Kaohsiung. Of course, Kaohsiung. But we did yes. one. Kaohsiung is kind of like a… Oh, okay. Because it was like a one-off thing. Yeah. One show in Kaohsiung. So it's 37. No, I swear it was 38. We're missing one. We forgot one. Are we missing one? We counted it with Sophie. I remember Sophie said 38. Which one are we missing? Oh no, this could be really bad. <laughs> 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 oh no. Um, what are we? Amsterdam, Norway, Copenhagen. You said Oslo, right? I said Oslo. We got London, Helsinki, Berlin. Ah, whatever. This is a podcast. I'm not gonna. That means no. If it's 37, it means we got to 40 with the three video on demand streams. Well, then it would have been 40. 40. Woo! Woo! We've done 40. Did we miss one? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. You can't all, or maybe I just can't miscount it. Just um, no, I don't think so. I mean, 10 in the states. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Cool. Uh yeah. What was your? Uh, sorry for the long <laughs> intro, but what was your favorite city? Both in terms of the city itself and then in terms of the performance. Oh, that's a good one. But how are you measuring our favorite city? Like food, sightseeing? Well, let's separate them. What's your favorite city for food? Hong Kong. It's pretty good. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I think Hong Kong is pretty good. Yeah. That one sticks out, really. Yeah. I, I Look, I mean… Yeah, no, Hong Kong is pretty good. To Dude, be honest. that dim sum. Oh, the dim sums, the tarts they have. Oh. And just like, I think in general, I know in our previous car park, we told like the baseline for the violin playing. Yeah. Just Hong Kong's baseline for food is so good. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you want to tell him, yeah. Yeah. They'll do it better than… No, I'm joking. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but no, like they will do a very good job of it. Yeah. I know you, what want, you, you know what I mean? Like, like all cuisines all are cuisines decent. They're all decent. They don't drop. Yeah. They don't drop the ball on any of them. Yeah. 
Um, that's okay. So, but okay, let's just go overall, right? I feel like, oh, so hard to say. I just don't know, but I'll tell you kind of ones I thought that stuck out. Copenhagen surprised me. Like, yeah, I thought it was much better than, than I imagined to be. Is it bad that I don't remember? <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember we visited some. It was so cold. Everyone went out running. Yes, I remember. And people were like jumping in a lake. It was kind yeah. of cool. I almost froze to death. Yeah, it was so cold. We um, underestimated the European winter. Yeah. Was it even winter? I don't think so. It was right? no, no, it wasn't. It was like after winter. It was our uh, spring, but it was still freaking. It cold. was so cold. It yeah. was freaking cold. I can't believe we thought it'd be a good idea to go outside and run, but it was like, yeah, frost bites, whatever. Yeah, Copenhagen stuck out to me. Um, the the fish wharf area was pretty cool, right? That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it's really cool, it and nice. it's just nice. And actually, Seattle was kind of nice too. Mm. Surprisingly, like mm. I'm not saying it's bad. Like I'm just saying. I was kind of pleasantly surprised by Seattle. Um, yeah, I like Seattle. Yeah. But to be fair, also, it's hard to say because it depends on the places we've been to in the city. Some cities, we don't get time. Yeah. You know, we just literally get off the plane, go to the hotel, perform, come back to the hotel, sleep, catch up on all the sleep we can. Yeah. And then go. I mean, if you think about it, right? Like you fly in that one day, you go crash to the hotel, you're tired, you sleep, the next day you perform, and the day after you fly again. Yeah, so, yeah. And trying to like, do work and all those in between right yeah. practice. So, but I enjoyed cool. Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver was nice. Yeah, yeah, I liked the, I know you hated it, the bridge, the Capilano suspension oh God, bridge. Wow. It's a little bit scary. If you think about it, it's just like, how often do they do engineering maintenance on this thing? And there's like 50 people on the bridge and little kids like jumping up and down. I was terrified. I but, mean, <laughs> I remember, um, I thought it was fun. Yeah, like our team, they were just laughing at me. Yeah. They're like, ha ha, Brett, ha 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 ha. Like, oh my God. Oh my yeah. God. I feel like I'm taking her on like a school trip. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the food in Vancouver is nice as well. Yeah, it was pretty good. good. Actually, uh, I remember. It was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, the random like Uber Eats we had backstage in Vancouver was so good. What do we have? Oh, yeah. The, the Tony's yeah, Bento. Right? Bento. Oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. 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 But I agree. Copenhagen's quite nice. It's just too cold. Too cold. I mean, uh, of course, uh, there's some is just a given, like Australian cities, like true. We just, you know, what I mean, and like Singapore, we know quite yeah. well. So it's, I'm kind of judging it based off my impression there. You know, mm. you know what I'm saying? Because we've been in those Australian cities more often. So yeah. What about your favorite city performance-wise? What sticks out was Amsterdam, Hong Kong. Hong Kong was crazy. Yeah. Uh, when I, I think just the energy in Hong Kong for all three shows was off the charts. Mm. Um, actually, I'd say though, as a country, USA overall, the energy was incredible. Yes. Um, I remember New York, it was still early on in our show, so the show was kind of still developing, right? And yeah. we we're getting used to it, getting hanging out. We were so jet lagged, but the energy in the room was like, mm -hmm. it was like 2,000 or something people just, uh, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, I think people in the States are generally, my impression, much more enthusiastic, like, enthusiastic, passionate, and extroverted. Just yeah, energy, yeah, yeah. Right? I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Like, they're, they're passionate. And it's, mm. I, they're really just passionate about We always joke, there. like, when we fly to the United States, people always just strike our conversations on the plane. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, what's that in that, Box you're carrying. Oh yeah, it's a violin. And there's yeah. people like chat a lot. Yeah, right? chat a lot. Yeah, Very yeah, yeah. extroverted. I like it. Yeah, I feel like as a country, USA, energy is unmatched. Mm. But in terms of just city specific, the ones I remember were Hong Kong, uh, Amsterdam. What happened in Amsterdam? I forgot. Amsterdam, there's just so many things. I, I feel like… And it was interesting. The Amsterdam crowd was… I, I don't know. Everyone, just the energy felt. I can't remember. There was just so many things. Uh, I feel like by the time we announced them, we really felt the groove as well. Mm. We we're just really into it. I one that stuck out uh, stuck out to me was a few actually. The um, Berlin was crazy. oh yeah, Berlin was crazy. So I mean, so many things yeah, happened. Let's, and we, we let's can talk, talk about, about Berlin. That, okay. Yeah, um, so, yeah, you can start. First of all. We're performing in 
where like the Berlin Phil is basically that's their hall, right? Yeah. And so it's like a famous Pentagon hall where like people are 360 around you and yes. kind of above. The acoustics is so beautiful for like classical instruments. Um, and it's just like a very such a prestigious hall. And the crowd went wild. Yeah. Right. So towards the end, everyone started throwing gifts because they are 360 and above. So everyone kind of had access and then yeah. everyone was just raining presents and yeah. gifts down to the stage as we were kind of taking our bows. And then this one, we just see in the corner of my eye this like black thing fall on the stage. So what is it? And turn out or someone threw their bra oh, that's so crazy. on the stage. And uh, then, can I just say, I was like, it really is crazy enough to have a bra from on stage. And to be honest, I didn't know how to react to it. And not just that, it was also in one of the most prestigious concert halls in the world. So kind of that polar opposites yeah. happening at the same time was really bizarre. I remember backstage, the people working, they were like, I've worked here for 25 years and I've never seen that happen yeah. here. They were just like… And I, I think you can tell when we see the people backstage, they get really excited. Yeah. Like, he was, these guys were like, we've never seen this before yeah. in my whole career here. I'm like… Me too. <laughs> We've yeah. never seen this before. I don't know. I don't know what happened. But it was pretty fun. I remember when the bra landed on stage. I think you knew what I was thinking already. I mean, there's videos online probably. In my mind, I was thinking, hmm. Well, I already looked at it. Everyone knew I looked at it. So I had to pick it up. <laughs> and the first thing my instinct was, I'm going to chase Eddie down with it. Oh, man. <laughs> and and there's videos on your reaction. Like you flinched. You knew I was going to like… Yeah, because <laughs> he's always like, I don't know, like even back in the day, if Brett like killed a cockroach and picked up, he just do this and like <laughs> shoved a dead cockroach in my face, and so I'm just like, I don't know, my body muscle reflex yeah. at that point just knew to run. <laughs> yeah, to run. <laughs> it's like, oh no, because <laughs> what am I gonna do after I pick it up, throw it back? No, I'm just gonna take it. Yeah, no, you're there, so I'm gonna. That's crazy. Like you, you see, I mean, I guess that type of thing happens at rock concerts but don't, you don't really get that in a classical concert. I don't think it ever happens. Yeah. So Berlin really stuck out to me. Berlin was also crazy because due to the nature of the hall, we couldn't really get a projector screen, mm -hmm. right? True. So most of our concerts, there was a projector where part of the plot was, you know, this the adjudicator from the academy. Uh, but we couldn't. So we had to kind of brainstorm and we ended up having a good friend of us who played and acted the role of the adjudicator. Oh, so and crazy. it was almost like a play or theater. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is one part where we play like Mazorsky. It's like this dramatic music and then he descends from where the audience is and comes down. Yeah, yeah. Something like the Mazorsky or something. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. but it was… So it was really stressful but epic stressful, at the same time. Stressful but crazy because we were literally trying to figure out the week before. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's all planned but it's like… This was so unique in the situation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, another thing that happened. Everything's happening in Berlin. I cut my finger. Oh. My I actually sliced it. I know it sounds really bad, but I full on sliced it. Like, so this was early on in our tour, and I don't think the scars were kind of there. Not actually, not much. You can't see it now, but oh, it's still there. I can see it. It's been like a year. But so there's this part in our show where we do the wheel of death. And we spin the wheel, and when you hold the wheel. We always give it to a fan that's in front row to give it opportunity to spin the wheel mm -hmm. to decide our fate. So for some context, in this part of the show, we have 12 concertos written on a wheel. And whatever the wheel lands on, we have to play that concerto yes. on that day. Yeah. And so it was my turn. I was holding the wheel. Now, the way I was holding the wheel was where the problem has started. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was thinking about it. It's just like… so. When you hold the wheel, the wheel's round, right? But behind the back, there's like a round circle that protrudes out a bit. Yeah, like right? a metal thing. Metal. Oh, it's actually just plastic. Oh, really? But it's very sharp, oh. right? It's just because it, it's just very sharp. It's like, you know, it's just… You know, like a plastic container on a corner. If you if you break it, it's just sharp, right? So around is very sharp. And silly me, I was holding it where my thumb was on plastic. that plastic wheel. It was just on the edge. So… When the person spun it, 
I remember because there's so much adrenaline. I remember it's like, why is it not spinning as I thought it would? But with the amount of force the fan did to the wheel, it should have spun a lot more. Because uh, it stopped too quick. It's like, it should be like, it's like, I was like, what? And I felt my, it just, that's a, at that point, it just sliced my thumb. And I mean, it was so much adrenaline. I didn't feel it at first. Yeah. But as we kind of, you know, I put the wheel down and I was like, what happened? I look at my thumb. I was like, oh, oh no. But I have to keep going, right? So yeah. as I was playing the concerto, I could see like every upper, the blood, it's like started, it, it was like a deep cut, but the skin was still on. So it was stopping the blood from coming out. So I'm going to. No, yeah. I still remember seeing there was some blood like dripping down your hand. Right? Yeah, it's like it started coming out. I was like, oh my God, I don't want people seeing this. It's so bad. It was kind of badass if you think about it now. I mean, it's, it's scary and terrifying, but… Yeah, I just kept playing. I had to keep playing because the show had to go on. Yeah, imagine seeing a movie though. And someone's like filming. It's like John Wick. And just blood dripping down your head. It's like, da, 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 da. like, gotta get it out. I was panicking. And yeah. then I remember that day, they, Sophie was like, you play really fast. I'm like, yeah, I played really fast. Adrenaline, just, adrenaline was… I was like, oh, everything was running. Yeah. I was like freaking out. And I went off stage and I was lucky it was someone back there and I was like, guys, first aid kits. Like, yeah. Because hold, I was holding on for a while. Anyway, so and then I, I, I don't know if the Berlin audience remembers they waited a while. Yeah. I never really explained. I should have, but as I was putting out the show kind of just went on pause for a second. Cause I was putting a band-aid on and just trying to keep going. Anyway, that was Berlin. Crazy. Yeah. What other things kind of went wrong? Okay, <laughs> so I'm thinking Brisbane. Oh, yes. That's very much. So, we're filming a video in Australia. And oh, it's just so stupid. Like, I was like grabbing camera gear and bags and all that. And I went to grab my violin case. Rookie mistake. But I didn't clip on my case properly. So, when I pulled it up, it kind of tipped over. And tipped over. And thankfully, I kind of caught it. But it didn't knock yes. against the chair that I was on. Yeah. Oh, so and I was like, oh, it wasn't the worst drop, but it was like, I heard the knock and I was like, oh, and I played and I could tell immediately the sound. Something went, went wrong. wrong. Yeah. I was like, oh no. But then I was like, okay, whatever. Maybe it's not that bad. I don't know why I thought this. I was just trying to convince myself it wasn't that bad. But then the next day, on the concert in Soundcheck. Soundcheck was like, Context was like 4 p.m. Concert yeah. starts at 7.30 p.m. Yeah. And everyone was just like, dude, you're violent. What happened to it? Sounds like a cardboard box. Yeah. And then… So I was like, oh crap. So then we decided to call up Olaf mm. last minute. And he was like, dude, are you free? Like, please, come on. And he said, yeah, yeah just come swing by to my place. Took an Uber. Got there. It was like 5… 4.35 p.m. I don't know it can be like 5.00. Yeah. Just after five by then. Yeah. yeah. And they checked it and turned out… It actually wasn't the knock that was the problem. But turned out another part of my violin, the seam had gotten open. Oh. Uh, so that's something that kind of can happen with violins. Especially just with like humidity. Or sometimes like a knock can cause it yes. to just open. But the… Um, where the top plate and the side ribs are meant to be glued, part of it had kind of come loose. And obviously, that means a lot of the vibration is getting lost. And so he's like, look, if you leave it with me here, I can like glue it back, clamp it, and then I can like… Uh, it needs to be kept on as long as possible, and then I'll give it back to you at like 7.15. I'm like, no way. <laughs> We're starting 7.30. Yeah. Can't like… What if the traffic or something mess yeah. up? And she's like… All of being like a legend, he just go. How about this? And I will come with. I'll glue it on, and then I'll bring the violin with all the gear yeah, yeah, settling yeah. to the backstage and let it dry as long as possible. And so yeah. that's what we did. I remember it was so cool. All else was backstage, and it was just your violin had like these the the the, 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 the pick, clamps, the clamps, the yeah. planks, pl uh, clamps on that side. Yeah, yeah. And then we yeah we let it out. I literally just had like ten minutes to warm up, and. It worked. It was better, thankfully. Um, but I think looking back, it still needed some time to settle. Of because course. after like three days and my violin started sounding, 
a lot more yeah. full. And so that that concert, I was just oh, actually, on my, the, psychologically, I was just freaking out. Hundred percent, that will play a psychological game. Yeah, especially a musician performing. If you guys know, like. If you know something is wrong, it's just like Queen Elizabeth stuff. It's just yeah. that level. It's just, I mean, it's not that level, but we're performing still. It's like, it's, yeah. it's, it's psychologically like <laughs> damaging. Yeah. Um, also, another one in Brisbane is our mic broke. Oh, yeah. Oh, Eddie's mic broke. Yeah, so that everything was, was going wrong with my. Um, yeah. Eddie's mic broke. And then I just remember, I looked at the sofa. I was like, hmm. All right, well, we just got to improvise a bit. <laughs> yeah. just get, but that was pretty fun. Yeah. We had a good time. Because I realized when you walked off, like, Eddie is not coming back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was hectic. Um, yeah. So my mic. I don't even know what happened. Oh no, I remember. So it was during the blindfold scene. So there's a part in our show where we had to play violin blindfolded, and then as I took the blindfold off, it got caught in the yeah. mic and it fell off. It was just dangling there. So I had to go backstage, and then Brett, you had to improvise with Sophie. Yeah. Yeah. I had to play the piano. I don't know why we decided on the spot. Yeah. And so you played the violin. But as you know, so we can play violin. I can't play piano. It's just yeah. terrible. So if you afterwards, she's like, I think we should swap back. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Anyway, but that then you fun. came on. That was fun. Oh, one more thing. So another thing that kind of went wrong, but it's not so much in the concert, but just traveling. Oh, okay. Going from Germany to Canada, the airline… Yeah. Lost my luggage. And yeah, it had like all these props and costumes in it. And all my clothes. All my two-set apparel. I was so sad. And so… Um, dude. Yeah, I remember landing there. And like just going to Uniqlo and be like… Please just buying all my underwear again. Yeah, it's just like basic necessity. Just trying to get through it. Yeah. But that no, that's actually… What I realized is just that post-COVID as well, mm. you know, because obviously there was such a lockdown, a lot of airlines lost so much. It was a mess. Yeah, it was a mess. Like so many airports were like borderline dysfunctional. And yeah. so, so you hear so many stories of people losing their luggage since then. And the crazy thing was we bought air tags yes. the day before we left. Yeah. But we went there at home. When they delivered I remember, it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Apple was like, if you're not there to physically accept the package, we can't deliver it. Uh, and that was the last day before traveling. Yeah. And so we're like, ah, oh, fine. And of course, they lost my luggage. Uh, so I had no idea if my luggage was in Germany, if it was in Frankfurt, Berlin, if it was in Canada. And the funny thing was, yeah, so we waited for hours at the airport before we realized it wasn't there. I remember. So we're trying to like get a sent to the next city and they said they'll make it, but then they'll never quite there. Yeah, so it's Toronto. Kind of like it's like they kept chasing. It's like, cat oh. and mouse thing, right? And it's like, oh, maybe now it's in Toronto, but it's like we're in Vancouver now. Yeah. Because it's not like we're just going one place. We're touring, clearly yeah. we're moving around. And I just remember one of the Canadian airports, I forgot which one, but I went to see the like that part with like the uncollected luggage slash lost luggage area. And there was just like a hundred suitcases there. Yeah. And I was just like… It's no chance. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. I ended up getting my suitcase, thankfully, about a month and a half afterwards. So it took a wow, while. Wow, okay. Um, and by, we then, made, we, by like, then our tours, that leg of the tour is already completed. Too. Yeah. But we made some funny suitcase jokes in our Canadian concerts. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's pretty so fun. So that became like Actually, a Yeah, Montreal was pretty fun too. Yeah. 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 That was good vibes. Montreal was a funny concert. Yeah, actually. Yeah. The audience in Montreal were like sassy. It was really fun. Yeah. I remember now. Yeah. It was quite a lively audience. Yeah. Actually, KL had a pretty good audience too. KL was really fun Maybe too. Maybe just recency bias because yeah. I remember it. But I think… KL, KL was really good. I feel like it wasn't all very good. Yeah. It's just… <sighs> different. Everyone's got such great energy. Thank yeah. you to all the two setters out there that come to your concerts. We love you all. Now… Yeah. Um… Do you want to share? I mean, I know we've talked a little bit about it before, but kind of how we talked about booking, yeah, yeah, the concert halls and how insane it is, right? You know, there's like venues that charge insane amounts, ten thousand dollars just to turn on the air conditioning, um, and they even take like commission of ticket sales, all that. But we never actually talked about the creative side mm. of preparing for a world tour. Yeah, because, we should talk about that. That's pretty fun. It's a fun process. Yeah. I mean, most 
See, it's an interesting thing too. It's like, you know, most in the classical world, it kind of works like this. Typically, you go, hey, I want to do a concert with you. You know, we're planning our, we're currently planning our program for 2027 in three years' time. I'm like 2039. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, what, what would you like to play? Uh, are you going to play Brahms, Mendelssohn, whatever, right? And obviously, with our shows, we try to create a storyline and we want that storyline to be fresh. We want references that are in the moment, you know, things that are happening now. And so we don't know <laughs> what our channel is going to be like in three years' time, right? Yeah. Obviously, Brahms is going to be Brahms, but I don't know what kind of jokes are going to be relevant, if, yeah. you know? And so for us, it's just a very different dynamic creatively. We kind of have for those who haven't seen our show, we have our own format, which is a blend of, yeah, there's a lot of classical music performing, but there's a lot of, I said, narrative, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of comedy. Yeah. So it's kind of a blend between comedy show, like a play or theater, mm -hmm. and a recital. Yeah, I exactly. That's all three. three. Our show is actually like all three combined. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if you count the Davies show, that was also including kind of like a rock concert with like yeah, lights yeah, exactly. and pyro. Yeah, yeah. That was a cool, fun thing too. But I think obviously with that came the difficulty of how do you design and create a two-set show? I don't know. What do you think? What would you say is the most challenging thing about Well, that? yeah, I think… First of all, it's actually really fun to design a show. But it takes a lot of time. Uh, I think the fans that came to our show would know. Well, at least they'll see kind of what the final sh product the show was like. How what we put in to make it interesting, right? Mm. And naturally with these shows, it's not like just playing a concerto. Mm. That people know what they're getting. Just play well and you're good to go. These shows, the, the hardest part actually is… Would our show actually work? Mm. That's actually the hardest part. Because it's so much guesswork. And it's so many iterations. We just keep changing. So first we come up with concepts. Just general concepts. You know, well, should it be like this? Should it be like this? Should it be like this? Ideas. And obviously, there's so many, right? But then you have to think about, well, how does it work practically? Because there's two of us and Sophie. How do we actually make this work? And then already that eliminates a lot of concepts and plots I want to do. The yeah. Concepts, right? And now that takes about like a month. Just two months probably. Just distilling. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, okay, now we kind of finally decide on one or two. We then start kind of batching it out. Yeah. Okay. What would the plot kind of look like? Yeah. I don't want to say too much, but you know, like kind of the plot kind of looks like. Yeah. And then after all that, it's like, well, what pieces do we want to play? So this is why we can't think of what we're going to play in 2039. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. The, the piece falls under the context of this whole plot. Mm -hmm. So… Then we think about that. It's like, what piece are we going to play? What are we going to do? Blah, 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 blah. And how, what is even funny at this point? Yeah. I remember, yeah, you, you mentioned a very important one, which is we don't know if it will work. And so yeah. there are two examples that really stuck out to me. Yeah. And obviously, this is more during the beginning. After a few concerts, you kind of know what audience responds to. And then you just… It's kind of more just like iterations. And, and you're having fun. You're actually… It's like you can already play Pagani Concerto, but then you're just adding stuff on for fun yeah. now. And it becomes fun and fun and fun. Yeah. yeah. So I remember the first one was how to start the show. That one was yeah. so hard to figure out. And we were tossing up between kind of just more casual conversation talking with the audience versus like a little skit. Oh, hell so And nice. we're working with the Hong Kong Orchestra at the time. And yeah, you know, I was just talking to people for feedback and there was like different… Um, people had different ideas of what mm. we should do. But I remember we tested the skit in front of the orchestra musicians and they didn't really laugh. Yeah. And last minute we decided, you know what? Let's just go for the more kind of authentic, relaxed approach of just talking with the audience. And that actually turned out really well. Yeah. And there was one lesson we learned which was… Um, it was weird because in our first world tour, like six years ago, we did the skit approach to the opening. But then something we kind of realized is like, 
you kind of have to not just think about what used to work in the past, but what feels authentic to you now. Yeah, actually, that was kind of a good example where it's just like, we just had to trust that. Yeah. Because the, the thing with the skit, I mean, don't get us wrong, skit is really fun. Yeah. But we, at the moment, the decision was, people, it's, it's hard. And it's also hard when people give you different kind of feedback and advice. Yeah. There always there was something wrong that felt about the skit. That's yeah. something off. But then we, I'm glad that we kind of went to authentic route. Yeah. Because when we walked on stage, we kind of had a little bit of a chat. That makes it, that kind of breaks the ice, makes yeah. it easier. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first one. The second one was the, uh, I think, if I'm what I'm thinking, was the uh, the Beethoven yeah. list C, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was stressful. We're thinking, we kept feeling like the part wouldn't land, it wouldn't work. Yeah. Because, I don't know, it was, it was very, very hard. Very hard to decide. Yeah. Because we never tried it. A lot of our stuff is, we never tried it and no one else has ever really tried it in this context. And so we, there's literally no feedback. Yeah. Right? And, but, you know, at the end, we kind of just reached a conclusion, trust our gut on this one. And we go, let's just try it. Yeah, so this is the part of the show where <clears throat> the three, me, Brad, and Sophie are alternating to playing Beethoven's Spring Sonata. So we yeah. kind of swapping parts, kicking each other off the instruments. While trying to keep the music going, right? Yeah. And yeah, we thought it was really interesting, but we were really worried it would come across cringe. Like we weren't sure if people will laugh or if they'll think, oh, this is so cheesy. Yeah. We kept going between, but out of all the alternatives that we had thought of, that was the best one. Yes. And we literally had like five, six other ideas. Yeah. And we kept recycling going through them, yeah. Yeah. And then I remember, you know, the time was up, obviously, the deadline's there, like we've got to commit. And Sophie was like, you know, I think it'll be all right. Yeah. I like it. Luckily, we had Sophie in this situation. Yes. There's so many things running in our head. Yeah. And Sophie was right because many people that day gave us the feedback that that was the favorite part of the show. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So I guess the lesson we learned from there, too, is just like, you know, don't be afraid if something's cringy and just, yeah, share and get feedback. You, yeah. you might not know. People I also felt like, like that was a good lesson in the sense that's like, maybe we felt it was cringy because we didn't see ourselves doing that. Mm. Right? Or the stuff we've seen that's similar in the past looked cringy. Yeah. But actually, it was actually it was a very good lesson. The way I realized, like, actually, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And actually, what's the worst that could happen? Give it a shot. Just because… Every part of me is screaming no. Mm. You know? It's yeah. like, nah, I don't think it's gonna work. No, every part of me is screaming no. It's like so stressful. Yeah. But it was that sense of relief. Yeah. So oh. I was like, oh. Also, it was cool. Like, yeah, and was... um Yeah. And I think after that, a lot of them were just iterations. We would mm. kind of as we got more used to the lines, we would say things in the moment, improvise a bit, just to keep it fun, right? Yeah. And sometimes the audience might say something, we bounce off it. And then things that kind of really work well, um, we kind of carry on to the next show. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that part of our show is really fun because it keeps it fresh for us too, mm. right? Like there's some jokes we know is coming. Yeah. And some of the jokes are actually just funny the whole time. But then sometimes it does get dull for us because yeah. we've done it so many times. Yeah. It's like imagine you're playing the same piece a hundred times a year. Yeah. You're going to get over it. Like yeah. No one will not get over it. So… The fact that we can do that makes it really fun. It's yeah. like sometimes Eddie just throws me a curveball. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay. How do I get out of this one? Things yeah, like that. Yeah. Just see if you can like improvise on the spot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think though, when it comes to the actual ideation, I think the biggest challenge about an hour and a half script compared to our typical YouTube video is structure. Yeah, And so it's the difference between like writing a three-minute song. Actually, look, I, I'm not a pop songwriter. There's probably a lot in it. But in my mind, it's about… I guess the analogy is how do you keep a structure over 90 minutes, Yeah, right? A 10-minute YouTube video, um, you can usually just have one or two ideas that you explore. Yeah. But you can't really just explore one or two ideas um, for 90 minutes. It yeah. gets boring, right? Now, at the same time, you can have like 50 ideas. But 
if they don't work well with each other, then it just feels like ra- 50 random ideas. It doesn't feel like one show. Mm-hmm. And so what I realized was there was this like constant, there's a tension between thinking from a high level of concept. Because often we would come up with concepts and they sound really cool. But then when it comes to the implementation details, it was just we quickly discovered it wasn't really possible to do or it just kind of, it wasn't as interesting as we thought to sustain 90 minutes, right? So I remember like we had so many fun ideas. One was like a murder mystery concert where like Brett gets murdered or like a viola gets smashed and we have to figure out who was the, um, you know, culprit. Or had like a music escape room idea. Um, But these kind of just didn't translate well once we wanted to kind of create the actual beats of the script. Now, on the other hand, if we approach it, we have some like really cool ideas. Like, oh, what if we play something blindfold? Or what if we play something with hula hoops? But how do you… Like, why? Why are we playing with yeah, hula hoops? Yeah, so it needs to be context. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just be like, why are we playing this piece with this hula hoop of us? Exactly. Yeah. And so, there's this kind of like constant polarity between the ideas in the bottom versus the overarching message and theme and the plot at the top. And funnily enough, I never thought I would say this, Brett, but I got to thank English essay writing back in the day. <laughs> right? Because yeah. you're, you're, that's kind of what it is, right? You yeah. have to give all these points and ideas, but you have to craft a 10,000 word essay out yeah. of it. Out of it. And so how to structure things together. Um, we landed on the idea of the Ling Ling exam and the academy because, again, kind of touching to authenticity. If it was something that felt very personal and real to us, yeah. right? It's something we've been through too. So. Exactly. So I think, you know, obviously the exam stuff, like every musician kind of knows the state of speed. So that kind of already creates a framework. But the idea of getting copy strike, the idea of the, inst- uh, the institution that's too traditional to kind of really acknowledge what we're doing. These are all things that have happened in the yeah, past, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just coffee striking. Right, it's so yeah, true. Right? It still happens now. You right. know, so you know, for those that don't know the show, it's like… Can, can you say it? Because it's after the virtual. Thing. Yeah, I, I, I think we can kind of say it. It's basically like… Oh, the, yeah, say, basically yeah, the just, academy represents the classical institution. You know, there's the kind of the very… The prestigious tradition that classical music is kind of known for. It's good in many ways, but they kind of see us mucking around on stage, goofing around, and they're like, "That's you guys are not good representatives of classical music. And so <laughs> they decided to copy strike our world tour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was a funny thing because yeah, we yeah. all know that's… And again, that's like… That's why we can't plan a script for three years in the future because when we wrote this, this is when we're getting copy strike. Yeah, I you know? think it's like, yeah, it's like, I feel like it's because the stuff we're doing now is so different. Mm. Well, it's all done before, but it's like putting it all together. And so yeah. that's why it never really fit kind of just the classical, yeah. musical kind of preparation side of things. Yeah. And so we're just sharing you know, our own personal experiences. I think, in fact, all four shows, we wrote the scripts ourselves completely. Yeah. Yep. Each one was very… It drains the life force out of you in a way. Um, I think… I really like the Davey one as well. Yeah, that was cool. Kind of like… Obviously, that one centered around Violin Chan. We created this world with the referee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to like gauge us through different rounds. I really like the virtual tour. That um, as well. That was pretty cool. Where we time traveled. Back in time to meet the members of Bach, Beethoven, B2… Yeah, BTSM. 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 I mean, that was clearly also very inspired from Avengers, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because that was during the time of Endgame. Oh, and so, so there epic. was the Infinity Stones. And yeah. so we had, you know, the Brock Stone, the classical, classical Stone. Stone. It was so cool. Uh, and then, yeah, that was super fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the creative side is fun. It's hard, but it's fun. And I would think, yeah, the, the biggest part and I would imagine that I think this is the same with composing music as well. It's 
you might have a lot of cool musical ideas, like this melody or tune, but how do you piece it together into a symphony? Exactly. Yeah. It's not like it's like I want to add thirds and sixths. So like, wow, okay, that's nice. But in context of a piece, yeah, how does that work? Yeah, right. Yeah. Cool. Um, what else is there to be on that? I don't know. I think well, tour. I'm kind of low key glad it's over because it was very tiring. Yeah, yeah. But I think I'm gonna miss being on the road again soon. Yeah, actually, I also feel like part of the tour meeting fans is really cool. Yeah, like it, it is so fun. Like, like you can feel the energy, everyone. Yeah, that's true. Because it's like fans from different cultures too. And that's, being able to see… Them. Yes, that's the fascinating part. I don't know if this talked up much, but when you travel, you see so many different cultures. But uh, some are very obvious and some are very subtle, right? And even just the subtleness of within our shows, right? I think all our fans, if you're here listening, thanks so much if you came to the show. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, yeah, so you notice a lot of different subtle things in the culture even just i know we all come together you know we all watch like we all we all relate to kind of the classical music side of things mm-hmm. and the humor and the gags uh, but what's also fascinating is the way the audience interacts with our show mm-hmm. and it shows so many like different cultures and the way people behave like some and it's so cool like some people react to different scenarios too like americans love some parts more so than other people, you yeah. know, other countries. And it's just really, really fascinating. Yeah. yeah. I know, for example… Um, oh, I've got one. <laughs> okay. So the biggest… Can I just say? Right. Sorry. This is… This is part when kind of Eddie… Eddie kind of loses his talent. <laughs> yeah. And he starts doing these TikTok dances or whatever. Yeah. And then he goes, Oh, I'm showing symptoms of no talent. Yeah. Now by far, the European audiences loses it at yeah. that part. I mean, everyone loses it, but European audience is like, they laugh at this part. Yeah. So it, you can, it's, it's like subtle things about the culture. Mm. It's so fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. What about actual fan interactions? Um, oh, I, I actually, for me, I mean, sometimes you will just go around like going to cafes, getting food, yeah. meeting at the hotel we're staying at. You know, they're mm-hmm. just working at the front desk. I think they're all pretty cool moments. Like mm. we meet a lot of fans around there. Um, what's also really cool is meeting them, like doing signing events. I know we don't do much of it these days mm-hmm. because uh, to be honest, like it takes a lot of time. Benny High also closes for a certain time. So we can't stay for two, three hours. Yeah, It'll literally take that long, probably longer. Yeah. And then it's always like, you know, if there's 2,000 people, yeah, you can only do 600. It feels kind of unfair. Yeah, how, exactly. How do you tell them, okay, you've been lining up, but sorry, time's up. Yeah, right. exactly, right. And and we we tried some VIP events in the first tour. And I think that was really, really nice to meet kind of the fans close up. I really like that. Um, but in terms of… we, The reason why we stopped is because it's just energy-wise. Yeah. And also logistically. And logistically, it's very difficult. Yeah. And not, it doesn't seem like much, but logistically, like just people to show and getting things yeah. going. Exactly. I would love to do it on a separate day, hmm. but… Also, we can't stay too long. Yeah. Because we're traveling with a team. Yeah. We have team members traveling with us and it does get quite expensive. So mm-hmm. we have to move on to the next city. Yeah. But I do enjoy those moments. Mm. Signings, events, um, receiving all the gifts. Like two setters have the craziest gifts. Yeah. And we had a rug. We had like dunas. We had like these crazy gift cards. And you know, sign up. We actually do read all of them. Yeah. Like I, I, I open it. You open it too. We like checking. We're like, wow, wow, reading all the message. All your stories… The stories, I won't say a particular story, but the story is generally kind of like you've started learning an instrument again. It's really nice. Or you started practicing again. Um, you've survived your kind of uni days watching our videos. It's mm. kind of really cool. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. I think, yeah, being able to interact with the fans both in the concert but also outside. Sometimes we bump into them or we'll take group photos. I don't know. I think it's… an irreplaceable feeling. It's something that I always feel like when we retire, when we're 50, we're going to miss that. Yeah, it's one you know of those I mean? things. Actually, I, I had a friend ask me, how, how does it feel like when people will just randomly notice you? Hmm. He goes, doesn't it get annoying because you're going about your daily life and yeah. stuff. And okay, I was like… <laughs> so, no, you're annoying me. <laughs> yeah, no. no. But then I was, I was like, 
Well, I mean, he has some valid points. Mm. So what if you're just going to grocery, do your own thing? What if you're just wanting to get a takeaway coffee and mm. send it out? You're really busy, right? What if you're on the phone or something? But uh, and then I thought it's like, yeah, well, besides those moments, actually, you all the grass is always greener. So it's like, I would miss these moments, actually. Yeah. But like you said, when you're older, mm. I would I think I would really miss these moments because everyone's kind of growing up. We all live through different periods of our life, and this is just the moment that we're sharing, and that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's true. It's just kind of point in time. It's like, I will miss these moments. Not everyone gets to experience these moments. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's always nice getting um, people just to acknowledge and appreciate the work that we've done. Yeah, I guess it helps us keep going, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> actually. <laughs> There's yeah. been some rough times, but yeah. <laughs> Got it for a lot, I guess. Yeah, so thank you. I know, you know, sometimes… Uh, for me personally, I love like getting approached by fans, but sometimes… I think I shared the story. Yeah, but yeah, you know, sometimes I might just work up or something and my brain's not that functioning. <laughs> I, I'm not the most social. Like, I, I shared in a Chloe podcast, I closed the lift door on a fan once. It was so yeah, stupid. by accident because it was just like, you're yeah. switched off, right? Yeah. You're like, uh, I know what you mean. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, I still appreciate you guys for coming out to yeah. guys talk to us. and um, yeah. yeah, I know a lot of you don't say hello. Like sometimes I can tell. Yeah. It's just shy, but I've always feel pretty say hello to us. Like, yeah. We're actually super chill and we try to be. And we love to kind of just get to know you, honestly. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. for those fans that we met, thank you so much. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think this world tour is kind of a great way of meeting everyone. Mm. And we do want to keep touring, actually. So keep an eye out. Um, go to the link. I think right now it's tusaban.com forward slash world tour. If you want to see us in our future shows, mm -hmm. uh, sign up so you guys will be first to notice. So what's next? After the world tour. Oh, like the other projects we're coming up now? Yeah, I mean like how should much? we share? Oh, uh, how much can we share? <laughs> That's not planned. <laughs> this, this is what Eddie's doing in the show. He'll throw me a curveball. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we, this was not one of the questions we prepared for this podcast. Um, what's coming up? Um, okay, so we've got lots of crazy projects coming up. I think one is related to a boy band that you guys might be familiar with. Mm. I won't say too much about it, but I think that's enough of a clue, I hope. I don't know. And I know it's been a long time, but mm -hmm. it's, it's time for the boy band to make a comeback. Mm. It's been a while because we've come been back. busy. Come back. Yeah. We've been busy on tour. So keep an eye out. This is something that we are trying. We're really pushing our limits on this one. Yeah. 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 And all aspects. So. That's super exciting. And so, I mean, we're also learning a lot too. Yeah. I can't wait to share with all of you. And yeah, then maybe, who knows? Another tour. When? 10 years? 50 years? Yeah, maybe 50 years from now on. Yeah. When I finally learn some other concertos. <laughs> <laughs> Mendelssohn. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to get I'm gonna get the watch. Yeah, get the, the, let me show them. You know how every piece has been inspired by um, inspired by something we did in the show, right? So this one, this watch is actually just the prototype. The actual one's going to be slightly different. But look at this design, bro. I should show the camera. Bro. Yeah, that's really cool. So it's basically… Okay, I wish people… I, I think the musicians would have appreciated it more. But in our first scale piece, we actually go through all 12 key signatures along the circle of fifth. So we start in C major and then we go F… Actually, we go this way. So we go to F major and then B flat all the way back to C. Yeah. And so… And then I was like, wait, 12 key signatures uh, on the watch clock. There's 12. Why not make so a circle cool. of fifth yeah, watch? Yeah. And so this is part of the Academy collection as well. And I love it. It's also good because I feel like it's also super light. Like you can just wear it. Sometimes yeah. some watches are very heavy. I mean, it depends on your preference. Yeah. As a musician, you will kind of want a light one and mm. just go about your day. Yeah. The design is cool. It's like the circle of fifths yeah. on your wrists. Oh. I love it. Yeah. Cool. All right. That's it, everyone. Thank you for tuning in again on Two Set Talks. As always, go practice. And if you like these episodes, please like and subscribe. And we'll continue making more two-set talks. Goodbye. Bye-bye.